So you just went out and bought yourself a new scroll saw. Now what are you going to do? Stay tuned and I'll show you. A few weeks ago, I did a video talking about all the tools that I use to sand my scroll saw projects and it got me to thinking, what's the minimum configuration in your shop that you can have to be able to build and complete scroll saw projects. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I think are the absolute basic supplies you need to have on hand, where you can get some of this stuff, and what you can get away with not having. Okay, let's get the easy stuff out of the way first. Uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do when you get your scroll saw home is go find yourself a pattern that you're interested in making. And uh, I have a pattern here that I downloaded off my blog. And again, you can go to www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. And in my free catalog, there's like 1,600 free patterns. So you'll be able to find something there that you want to do, something for nearly all levels of scrollers. In this case, we're going to build a little tea light candle stand that I published on my blog the other day. Very simple pattern, but this is what we're going to get started with. Okay, now let's talk about some of the most basic supplies for preparing your pattern and getting your pattern on the wood. Um, I like to use blue painter's tape, and I use this 3M General Purpose 45 spray adhesive. And in just a few minutes, I'll show you how to use that, but that's a couple things you're gonna need. I also like to have a pair of scissors on hand. This is to cut out the pattern shapes. Also to help me cut out the paper uh, patterns are, I like a nice sharp X-Acto knife and a square. And I use this a lot of times when I want to cut at the very bottom of a pattern, the very edge, and I'll show you that when we cut this pattern out in a minute. But I like, like a nice straight edge and a good sharp X-Acto knife. You're also gonna need some wood glue. Uh, this happens to be Gorilla wood glue, but the tight bond or any of the yellow wood glues will be fine. Uh, you can even use some of the super glues with the accelerators for some projects. Uh, but some kind of glue. We're going to use this to glue our project together. Sandpaper. We're going to do it by hand. Um, it's nice to have all those power tools to do the sanding for you, but if this is all you got, it'll get it done. One of the biggest challenges uh, all beginning scroll sawers have are finding woods in the thicknesses uh, that you want to use for your scroll saw projects. You'll see on my patterns where I routinely use one quarter inch thick wood, one half inch thick wood, and three quarters inch thick wood. And that's pretty much the three primary color or sizes that I'll use. Uh, sometimes we'll use some other stuff, but how do you go about coming up with woods in those thicknesses? Uh, the big box stores don't carry a very good supply of that. Uh, but if you go to a place like Home Depot and you look, they usually have a small section of pre-dimensioned lumber. And that's what I did today. I went out and bought three foot sections of some red oak and I bought it in one quarter inch thickness. And this board, which is a five, or I'm sorry, a 5.5 by 0.25 by 36 inches long, cost me $7. Here's a half inch thick red oak board. This one's uh, five inches by 5.5, uh, I'm sorry, 0.5 inches by 5.5 by 36 inches. And that one cost me a little over $9. And then I picked up some three quarter inch board. Uh, now this one, when you get up to this thickness, most of the stores uh, only sell this by the linear foot. So I had them cut me a section. There was an eight foot, uh, 8 inch by 8 foot board and I had them cut me a, a 36 inch section of it and that cost me about $16. Now what you're going to find is that you're going to go into sticker shock with some of this wood and how much it costs. Um, but if you think about it, the scroll saw is one of the most frugal tools in woodworking when it comes to wood. If you build a piece of furniture, you're going to spend hundreds of dollars just on the wood. Uh, for a scroll saw project, you're going to see we're going to use just a very small amount of this wood today. Uh, so that's good about the scroll saw. I also purchased, and we won't be using this in this video, but just so you'll know, I bought this six foot uh, by three inch by three quarter inch piece of poplar, and or I'm sorry, this is clear pine. And what I use these boards for is to cut the nameplates out, and you'll find a 
program on my blog that allows you to generate the, pa the patterns to create the nameplates for desk nameplates. Okay, so we've got our pattern, uh, we've got our supplies we need, we've got our wood, um, and we've got our wood to the thickness we need because we bought it that way. Uh, you can also go online and purchase uh, scroll saw ready lumber, but we won't get into that right now. I was just trying to uh, get you to the point where you could go down to the uh, big box store and pick up what you needed uh, so you can get started on a project. The next thing you're going to need to be able to do is to take these 36 inch length boards and cut them down to the size you need for your particular scroll saw project. In other words, we're going to do a cross cut on these boards to get the pieces we need. Now, to keep it as minimal as possible, we've always got the hand saw. So if you can get yourself a, just an inexpensive uh, saw, because we're not going to be making you know, real fine, accurate cuts with it, we just need a saw where we can cut it off. Obviously, better if you've got yourself a circular saw, and that's what we're going to use today. Uh, you can pick up a cheap circular saw, uh, not, not too expensive. So um, that's one thing I think I would recommend. Obviously, a table saw is better, but this video is about how to get started without having a shop full of tools. The next thing you're going to need is when you apply the pattern to the wood, all the interior cuts have to have a starter hole drilled in them. So if you don't have a drill press, a hand drill with a 1 16th inch drill bit inserted will get our entry holes drilled and the 1 16th inch bit is small enough to get through almost any of the entry holes that you'll ever see on a pattern on my blog. Okay, on the pattern we're working on tonight, the body of the candle holder is, I believe it's about four inches tall. So I'm going to cut off a section of this board that's about four and a half or five inches in length, and we'll use that for this piece of the wood. Then we'll come up and we'll get the one quarter inch thick wood, and we'll cut off just a small piece uh, to cut these two circles. So again, the pattern we're going to make is this little leaf pattern. This will be the base and this will be the top that holds the, uh, the tea light. So we'll mark this at about uh, four and a half inches. And I'm just going to cut this freehand with the circular saw. Uh, you may need to um, be a little more precise and use a square to do this, but for what we're going to do here today, I think I can do it with a circular saw freehand. Okay, there's the board we're going to use for the body of the tea light. The next thing I want to do is cut out the pattern so we can apply it to the wood. And in this case, we've got a couple circles so we can just cut those out with the scissors with no problem or just use the X-Acto knife to cut around them. Um, but for the base of the candle holder, we've got a circle that has two flat spots, one for the top and one for the base of the candle holder. So what I like to do is use an X-Acto knife and cut right on the lines on this, and that way we can apply the pattern right to the edge of the wood, and we'll at least have one of these straight lines that we know is already flat uh, because it came cut straight. So I'm going to cut this right on this line. Now what we could do if we had a table saw you know, or something is we could cut the wood to the exact length of this and we could cut this other end flat also and we could use both uh, sections totally flat. But in this case, we just have to cut as straight as we can. Now I'm going to cut around the rest of this pattern just to eliminate some of the waste paper. So that part of the pattern is ready. Now I'm going to cut around roughly these circles for the base and the top. And now these are ready for our wood blanks. And the next step we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to apply these to the blanks. The way I apply patterns to my wood blanks uh, is a couple step process. I like to use the blue painter's tape underneath the pattern. And this does a couple of things. It makes it very easy to remove the pattern once we finish. Uh, you'll see that the spray adhesive sometimes gets pretty sticky and it's hard to get off. So I use the blue painter's tape under the pattern. And the second bit of that is it helps lubricate the blade and it makes the cut a little smoother. It makes your blades last longer. So what I do is I take my wood blank, 
and I just apply just enough blue painters tape to cover the section that we're going to be cutting. And one more strip ought to do it. And at that point, I'm going to take the pattern, and on the back of the pattern, I'm going to apply some of this spray adhesive. Now, I generally, when I do this, and I'm trying to not be a minimalist like I am here right now, I have a little drawer that I pull out that I can lay this on to spray it. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to hold it with my fingers and give it a little spray here. Some people will tell you that you need to... Uh, wait a couple minutes before uh, you apply this pattern but if you're using this blue painters tape you don't need to do that because it's going to come up real easy with no problem so I'm going to apply that pattern right to the very edge and there's our first blank uh, with the pattern on it this next one I'm just going to apply it directly to the wood uh, this wood is so thin uh, that uh, the blue painters tape really doesn't help that much with the blade uh, you probably uh, could use the blue painters tape uh, to help get the pattern off a little easier uh, but generally it's not too big a deal and I'll show you a trick to get it off if you have that problem and there's the pattern applied for our two one quarter inch pieces so now we've got both of our blanks ready uh, we need to drill a couple of or one interior hole for this pattern uh, we wouldn't have to drill interior holes for this one but just to make it easier we will and I'll show you that here in just a second I've got my drill press set or my drill press my drill set up with a 1 16th inch drill bit in it and we're ready to drill our first entry hole I've laid down a sacrificial piece of wood uh, just to keep from drilling into my uh, workbench here and I've got my wood blank ready so what generally I'll do is I'll try to find a place to start uh, where I can start right on a point. So we'll just make our entry hole right here. Okay, there's our entry hole cut for cutting out the leaf pattern in the middle. And we'll start the exterior cut over here on the edge of the board. So that won't be a problem. On our one quarter inch piece of wood, I'm just going to put an entry hole right next to each one of these circles and that'll just give us some place to start our blade without having to start all the way over here from the edge and uh, sometimes if you start on the edge your board will start to uh, become weaker as you're doing the cut and you kind of have to hold things together so a lot of times if I'm going to cut out something like this I'll just put an entry hole right next to it so now we've got our pieces ready it's time to go over to the scroll saw and start cutting I'm over at the scroll saw now and I've got my blanks with the patterns all prepared on them and I'm ready to start cutting. Now in this video I'm not going to get into any detail on how to use the scroll saw. If you need to learn some of the techniques for making cuts with the scroll saw just visit my blog and in the left hand column you'll see the scroll saw school and that will teach you all about cutting circles, cutting straight lines, making sharp turns and all that stuff. But for right now I'm just going to cut these patterns out then I'll meet you back over to workbench. There's the last piece cut out. Let's head back over to the workbench and I'll show you how to put it together. We got the three pieces of our project back over here at the workbench and we're ready to take the patterns off. Now the one where I use the blue painters tape basically you just have to get yourself a corner started and then from there you'll be able to peel the rest of it off pretty easily. So get us piece started and then of course where the uh, tape is in different sections you, sometimes you'll have to peel it up from there also. So let's get this off. And then I'll go back and show you how to get the pattern off of the one where we didn't use the painter's tape. And uh, sometimes it can be a little bit more of a challenge. So there's the pattern off of the body of the 
the tea light holder. Now we've got these two one quarter inch pieces that we're going to use for our base and our top and uh, we got to get the pattern off of those. Now sometimes you can peel this right off and sometimes you can't. If you can't, get yourself a little bit of uh, odorless min mineral spirits and I usually put it in a little spray bottle and I'll just spray it on to the piece but if that uh, doesn't work for you or you don't want to make a mess you can spray it on a paper towel also and then just kind of soak the pattern and uh, you'll see that once this pattern soaks in with this mineral spirits the pattern will just literally pull right off uh, it makes it very very simple to get the pattern off and then uh, you can use your towel to wipe the glue residue off before the uh, mineral spirits dries and uh, you'll get a nice clean surface and you might have to let this dry for a couple minutes but uh, anyway that's how you get the patterns off now the way this uh, tea light candle holder works still got a little bit of tape right there on top is you've got a base a body and the top and then the tea light sets on here now in the original pattern I have it set up to where you use a Forstner bit to drill a recess into this top uh, to hold the tea light um, because of the nature of this video and we're trying to keep everything very basic we're not going to do that we're just going to let this be a platform that we can set the tea light on so before we start gluing these together we want to do a little sanding so in this case because we're going to keep things simple we're just going to hand sand it so I'm going to just cut myself a little sheet, about an eighth of a sheet it should be all we need. And basically all I'm looking to do is uh, on the back of this piece that we cut, you're going to generally have a little bit of fuzzies around where the blade came out the bottom. And so we want to clean that up. So I'll just take this and just knock those fuzzies off. and around the edges also. Now, if your cutting of your circle got a little bit rough, um, it can be pretty hard to clean that up with just hand sandpaper. That's where uh, mechanical sanding comes in very, very handy. Uh, but if you have to, you know, sand down those ridges and it's gonna take a little uh, elbow juice to get that done, uh, but you need to get it as smooth and rounded as possible on both sides. Uh, the next thing I want to do is just knock off the sharp edges around where the edges are. So we'll do that. And we'll do it on the front and back. Just to make it a little bit more pleasing to hold when we pick it up. And the other side. And the back. Now I would probably do a little more detailed sanding on this than I'm going to do in this video. Uh, but you get the idea. We want to get this as smooth as we can. Now, one thing you may run into uh, when you cut the top and bottom, when you have a piece that needs to have flat edges on it, uh, the scroll saw, if you're not very accurate, this may not be as flat as you want it to be, and it might make the glue joint a little tough. So what you can do is get yourself a hard surface like this uh, uh, piece I have here, and uh, put your project on there in the place where you need it to be flat and just rub it back and forth until you get a nice flat edge on the top and the bottom. And that'll give you a good uh, glue joint that you can uh, apply your top and bottom to. Okay, next we've got the base. And same thing with the base. I want to just sand off any high spots where I may not have cut the circle real accurate. And you can see right here where I started and stopped the cut, I've got a little bit of a nub. So I want to spend a few minutes sanding that down nice and flat to get it nice and round. And again, I'm going to knock off all the hard edges. Same thing with the top. Look and see if I've left any nubs anywhere. In this case, I've got a little bit of a bump right there. Probably want to sand that down. 
And uh, if you watched my video from a couple weeks ago where I showed all the uh, uh, tools that I use to do sanding on scroll saw projects, um, obviously if you can afford to go out and buy a whole shop full of tools, all of these jobs get easier. Uh, tools like your table saw, your cross cut saw, drill press, your planer, uh, your band saw, all those tools make things either faster, cheaper, or easier. Uh, but you can do it by hand, so you don't have to not get into the hobby just because you don't have a shop full of tools. Might take a little more time and a little more effort, but that's all right. We're out in the shop to have fun anyway. It's not a race. So, again, probably needs a little more detailed sanding, but that's where we're going to go from right there. Now all we have to do is, let me wipe this down just a little bit. Now all we have to do is glue this to the base, and you want to center it up pretty good and glue the top one there. So I'm going to go ahead and get my glue out, and we'll apply just a little bit of glue. My glue's starting to get clogged up here, knock the clog out of there. That uh, glue bottle didn't want to cooperate, so I switched over to another glue bottle here, just for the sake of speeding this up a little bit. And again, I'm not going to overdo this with glue because these modern glues, you know, they do a good enough job that you don't need a ton on there. So I've got that on there. Uh, I'm going to call this the front. I'm going to center it up on the base. And we'll call that pretty good. I'm going to put a little glue on the top. And I'm being uh, particular about the wood grain here. Um, I've got the wood grain in the base running top to bottom, and I mean on the, the uh, body of the candle holder running top to bottom. On the base, I've got the grain running this direction, and the same with the top, I've got it running this direction. And let me just take a look, see if I've got everything pretty centered. Okay, that's pretty close. We're going to give that a few minutes to dry. We'll come back and put a finish on it. Okay, we've let the glue dry a few minutes here. Now we're going to finish off this project. And uh, a very quick solution to finishing these small projects is Krylon Color Master uh, Acrylic Crystal Clear or Gloss. Uh, you can either get gloss or uh, matte. Uh, I like to use the gloss for these little projects like that. And now normally when I'm doing this, um, I have a little spray booth over there on the other side of the room that I use. But again, to keep this as basic as possible, I'm just going to hand turn this thing and we're going to give it a couple of thin coats, a couple of light coats of this uh, acrylic spray. Now the end grains of this wood are going to take a little more of this spray uh, than the front and back to get them coated. And I'll show you a mistake I made here on this side. You may not be able to see it too well. But right there on the very edge, there's a little bit of a white spot. And that's where I let my finger have some glue on it and touch the uh, edge of the wood there. So you want to be careful about that. So again, I'm just going to Move this around, give it a light coat. We'll let that dry just for a minute. We'll come back and give it one more coat and then we'll call this project done. Okay, here's our little tea light candle holder, all finished and uh, ready to display on our shelf or uh, sell at a craft store or whatever we want. This is one I did the other day. And again, this was one that I used uh, all the tools in the shop to make. And you can see the one that we made today looks just as good and we use very few power tools uh, other than the scroll saw to create it. Now this project again was not about the project it was about the you know the workflow of how to get started with the scroll saw without having to uh, fill your shop full of tools. Now if you can afford to build a full shop a table saw, a band saw, 
a planer. All those tools are going to make the job easier and faster and maybe even less expensive. Uh, but you may not have that opportunity right now when you're just getting started you know, to have all those tools. So if you don't have the tools, uh, don't sweat it. Go ahead and get your scroll saw and get started making some of these little easy projects. Uh, I think you'll find that you'll enjoy the hobby a lot. Uh, and then as you build out your shop, uh, you can enjoy those tools also. I'm Steve Good. I hope this video was helpful for you. And we'll see you next time here at the Scroll Saw Workshop.